welcome aboard to this episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to following the entire story of One Piece from beginning to end as we focus on each volume. We keep the discussion spoiler free for new fans of the series, so this is the perfect place to follow along, whether you're new to the series or just want to revisit the world of One Piece with us. This week, we will be covering the first part of Volume 57, Paramount War, which covers chapters 552 through 557. My name is Joel, and I'll be your host. Joining me today, we have Sean. This is Sean. We have Evan. This is Evan. We have Cody. What's up? <laughs> What's up is we're in the middle of a war. Oh. The war has officially started. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, so this has been um, you know, in the works for quite a while. Because we were starting to get like uh, the build up. Like even back in like Saba Odi, uh, you know, we're getting like when that you know Whitebeard's forces were on the move. Uh, actually, I think to throw a bark is when uh, we found out about Ace mm -hmm. being captured. So yeah, now we're finally getting into uh, you know what what this means, and it's gonna get pretty crazy. Just a bit. The moment has finally come. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how about we just start off with a little recap from where we left off. Luffy and his jailbreak crew managed to hold off Magellan long enough for Jinbei and the others to secure a Navy ship and escape the prison. As they approached the Gates of Justice, they wondered how they would get through the gates until, suddenly, they began to open. Jinbei explained that Bon Clay made the decision to stay behind and open the gates so the others could all escape. Jinbei connected Luffy with Bon Clay over the transponder snail. They had a tearful goodbye as they thanked Mr. Two. At Marineford, the Navy forces gathered as the world watched. Ace was brought to the execution stand where Sengoku made the startling announcement that Ace is actually the son of Gold Roger. Due to his heritage, Ace must die to end Roger's bloodline. Whitebeard's fleet arrived at the Navy town. Then Whitebeard himself appeared as the Moby Dick surfaced from under the water. Whitebeard declared he is here to save his son. All right, so before we get into the chapter, we have the limited covered series number 15. Choppers, I'm not food, you jerks. Volume 1, Raccoon Stew Escape. Chopper runs as the island inhabitants try to capture him. Oh, poor Chopper. Uh, we'll get back to him later. So, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. They have bazookas. So let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, but poor Chopper. He's uh, <laughs> running scared for his he's life. He's having a rough time. He's having a rough time. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> he's, he's not food. <laughs> okay, so we're excited to get into the, the chapter. Chapter 552, Ace and Whitebeard. As Luffy's group passes through the gates of justice, Ivanka wonders if Dragon is here. Luffy clarifies that Gold Roger is Ace's dad, not Dragon, to everyone's shock. At Marineford, Whitebeard uses his Tremor Tremor powers to crack the air, causing large sea quakes. Ace thinks back on his past, reflecting on when he first set out on his journey, and later when he fought Jinbei in order to get to Whitebeard. Whitebeard eventually showed and offered to take Ace in, even though he was here to kill him. Over time, Ace realized he wouldn't be able to kill the pirate and rose up the ranks to becoming the leader of the 2nd Division. After Teach killed their crewmate Thatch, Ace took it upon himself to bring Blackbeard to justice despite Whitebeard's warnings. In the present, Ace tells everyone to leave him as he brought this on himself. But Whitebeard asserts that this was his fault. Sea quakes that Whitebeard set off earlier formed into two massive tsunamis that threatened to wipe everyone out. Okay, so Evan, what do you think of Whitebeard's powers here? <laughs> uh, this is incredible. I mean, we know Whitebeard is the most revered pirate in all the land. And so finally getting to see why um, is something I've been hi like highly anticipating. And uh, to jump to the end of the chapter to see the result of uh, his quake, or I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but like he like literally fractures the air around him, um, which is such a cool, ability devil fruit like illustration the way it's drawn is so cool 
Um, yeah, this is very OP. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Nugi is showing that, like, even though he's not not as strong as he used to be, he still packs a punch. Because the only time we've really seen him before was like when he was, you know, hooked up to you know the medicine bags, and he mm-hmm. had like the nurses attending to him. So he was kind of like, yeah, you know, he didn't seem like he was in like the best shape. But now we see here he's still a force to be reckoned with, and he's. He's not like one to mess around with. And we, we hear Sengoku say uh, he has the power to destroy the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, nice. still got it. <laughs> yeah, put some respect there. Mm-hmm. The guys, yeah. About, yeah. <laughs> I was even in like in that first um, couple pages where we see him cracking the air. Um, when the uh, the waves first start roiling up, we see that like he, it's even distorting the walls of yeah. Marineford. Like the power is literally world bending. It everything yeah. everything uh, succumbs to this. It's insane. Yeah, I think it's interesting that he's able to use this in the air. So like, it's not like Earthbenders, like an Avatar, where they need like ground or like you know earth to manipulate uh he's able to even use his powers in the air so it's not just like hit the ground and cause earthquakes he can literally hit the air and, and crack it so it's like i think it works in a different way than you would maybe initially expect it to work but then mm-hmm. when you see an action it's like okay so yeah this is uh this is pretty crazy and then he causes like these massive waves of form and it's like they start building up throughout the chapter here so yeah, this is uh, kind of like the opening salvo. And he's like making a statement. Living up to the hype. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also just want to go back to the beginning. Um, the moment where Luffy says, oh, we just had one of the biggest revelations in this entire story. <laughs> one of the biggest um, <laughs> subversion of expectations. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Such a Luffy reaction. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> He's like very nonchalant about it, and yeah. uh, like luckily, everybody in the world just found out about it too. It was like, oh, that was supposed to be a secret. I was <laughs> I was supposed to say that. My bad. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, I never mentioned that before. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's impressive that Luffy's kept that secret that long. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. But I think it just goes to show that the way he views Ace is very much a brother. Like he's, he just refers to him as a brother. Mm-hmm. So just like the relationship that they've had, um, it's, it has been literally that they are brothers. So they don't have to be related by blood in order to, to have this brotherly relationship. That's just like what they've developed. And that's clearly how, how Luffy and Ace have been viewing it. So I think it's just nice to kind of have that the way it's it's portrayed by these characters. I think it's just really nice to to have that relationship with them. And it's I feel like it's it's very apparent just given that I I never really thought about it um, in that way in this moment in this chapter, which I think adds so much to um, the relationship that's established between Ace and Whitebeard in that flashback, Mm -hmm. because that is just a mindset that Ace has had since he was you know assumedly a kid from what we're seeing in uh, these flashbacks yeah um and so of course he gravitates to someone who is who says doesn't matter your blood doesn't matter the fact that i have this bond with you is the thing that's strongest yeah so it's not the blood that's that's making the family it's the the people in the connection that they're making that is their true family mm-hmm. but now von Kopf's probably like second guessing everything like oh oh well, i was here because of the dragon was gonna be here um miscalculation well, on my part <laughs> <laughs> i lost my swanky prison bar i don't even see my boss excuse me i was waiting for i was waiting for the right moment that wasn't it <laughs> yeah so while the the sea quakes um forming here we do get ace's 
um, flashback here. So he has a little bit of uh, the history. So we kind of see uh, how he started out, and he he started with the the spade pirates, but then he was trying to kill Whitebeard. That, that apparently seems to be the cool thing to do because everybody seems to want to kill Whitebeard for the sake of being like uh, like he's kind of like the stepping stone uh, that's in the way of everybody in order to reach the top. So it's like, okay, well, if we can get rid of Whitebeard, then there's nobody that can get in our way. So that seems to be like kind of the mentality that a lot of these people seem to have, including Buggy and Crocodile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you guys think of like these early interactions here? We see uh, like Ace and Jean Bay. Yeah, do a bit, bit, of a, bit of a tussle. <laughs> it seemed like broadly a draw. And like in the sense that like you're both gonna kill each other, yeah, and they both fall down. So like that's and that tells you how strong Ace is, how strong Jimbei is. Like yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because they went at it for what was it five days or something? Yeah, they've yeah. been fighting for five days before <laughs> before White Bear show. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Ace is holding his own against uh, Fishman. So the pretty Fish impressive. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we even yeah. see back back then that Jean Bay had that uh, strong connection for Whitebeard. He says he's not with the Whitebeard Pirates, but I owe him. So he's actually here to help defend Whitebeard, just because he wants to respect him, and he has that. Um, he fe- he feels like a debt to Whitebeard, so he wants to be honorable about that. So yeah, he just has that amount of respect for Whitebeard. So I think that's interesting to see, even back to this point. I also love this panel of Whitebeard just extending his hand out. Become my son. Um, <laughs> ah, call me daddy. And, okay, that was weird. That was weird. Sorry, sorry, Ace. That There's was weird. Edit going <laughs> around of that panel um, <laughs> where you, they take away the become my son. It just says, give me your phone. <laughs> and the number of middle schoolers, I have like literally just like <laughs> taken that panel and been like, hey, put it away. Give me your phone. <laughs> nice. It actually works a couple times. They're like, ah, mister, you're like One Piece. Sure. <laughs> and, like We do have this like um, sequence where we see Ace make multiple attempts on Whitebeard's life. But like, even when like he's like sleeping, like Whitebeard like still like knocks him out. <laughs> <laughs> and the entire like, crew people trying to so sleep. nonchalant about it. <laughs> and nobody's like trying to stop him. Nobody's even concerned. Like they took him in on the ship, which is a pretty bold move. Like it's like, hey, this guy was trying to he's here to kill you, but he's like he's such a non threat to us, we're just gonna have him chill with us. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, like have at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And not to get too far into the power scaling stuff, but we do even see that Ace uh, turned down an offer to be a warlord based on a newspaper that Whitebeard was reading before uh, the two of them met. Ah. So uh just goes to show the level of confidence that this crew has. Yeah, that's a, another good point. Yeah, a hundred attempts. <laughs> but I mean, it does go to show that Ace like kind of made a name for himself, even on his own. Mm-hmm. I do love in the last one we see in the bottom with the axe at his head. He just at Whitebridge just looks like. Oh my god, he's just so sick of this shit. He's just so he's just like this is exhausting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really cool getting some of the backstory here and seeing um Whitebeard and Ace bonding and seeing the connection that they build. And I also feel like there's kind of um a parallel between like Ace going off for this vendetta and to avenge um a crew member kind of like a no man left behind um mentality and whitebeard kind of tells him uh you know forget about it like i don't have a good feeling about this you know um but ace is like really convicted to 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 get to avenge his his crewmate and then we see kind of the same thing mirrored in whitebeard coming to save ace where it's kind of like no man left behind and and like kind of all of the pirates uh kind of had a different tune than when ace was going after his crewmate they were kind of it seemed like they were kind of adopting ace's mentality 
Ace's mentality here. Well, I think the the main distinction is Ace was going out for revenge, and they're here to save Ace. So mm -hmm. they were they were trying to tell Ace like it's not worth it, and you know it's not not worth the revenge. It's and then um, Ace was saying like I don't want anybody to dishonor your name. So like he he's kind of doing it also for Whitebeard to not make him look bad. Um, but New Whitebeard, he was trying to be like you know it, like you know I, I I hate that this happened, but we can't really change that like it's not worth it like we'll just have to move on but he's kind of didn't let it go and now he's kind of paying the price for you know going after um teach after he was told not to but yeah so like ace does feel guilty that now everybody's here for his own mistake because he was kind of um like too hot-headed and didn't really listen and he kind of went off on his own but he like the rest of the, the white parts are here to say like, hey, we're not abandoning you. Like, you're still a like, part of our family, and you know, it's it's not your fault. And then like white even says like, oh, I told you to go, and everybody's like, that wasn't that right? Isn't that what I said? So he's like, he's trying to make Ace feel better about it, about the situation mm -hmm. by not making him feel guilty. He's like, it's not, an, it, this isn't your fault. You didn't cause this. Um, so I think he's just trying to help Ace with that burden. Yeah. It's it's so tough for him because you know we see this conversation where he has with Marco, where Marco's saying, "Hey, we're all a bunch of strays here." Whitebeard does mm -hmm. consider sons, and that's that's why we're all together. It's being part of this crew gives us. He says it makes it feel good, but it gives them belonging. It gives them purpose, and so you know when Teach um, casts that all aside, um, I think that's not just a violation of a pirate's code but it's an affront to this entire family this family that ace values so much after seeing that even whitebeard mm. who is roger's greatest rival doesn't care who his dad was in contrast to basically this entire world at this point yeah um but at the same time with all that emphasis on this family um on all of um on this bond that that whitebeard has established between them of course ace is going to see blackbeard uh casting aside as an affront not just on whitebeard's reputation but on everything he stands for um but at the same time ace wouldn't have been so rash without this bond being so established without this code that whitebeard's pirate have so i think i think whitebeard does take some ownership of you know if if this if we were just a normal crew, then you wouldn't have felt obligated to go after this guy. You wouldn't have put yourself in danger. And then, you know, the, in in one set, in one uh, sense, it's for Whitebeard. In one sense, it's for Ace's sense of belonging. But, you know, I think Whitebeard does show some genuine, uh, some genuine remorse in his role in where Ace is at right now. But of course, yeah. Ace exemplifies the sense of belonging that Whitebeard gives him. So of course, everyone wants to save him. <laughs> of course, they love him. Of course, yeah. they want to make sure he gets out of this. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So we see like the transition like over time, like Ace going from like I don't get it, like what what's the whole deal with this Whitebeard family thing, to like oh like I totally get it. like I'm fully in now. So he cares about it so much to the point where he's like he went to all the, all this trouble because uh, he wanted to protect the family um from from like essentially like it was being threatened because like you know like, like you said like teach threw it away so he didn't respect what they had so like ace found that to be like an affront to all that so yeah so i i do think this is um it, i think there's a lot that gets established from this chapter so we get to see how this plays out and builds over time even though it's like only one chapter i do think it's an effectively here to, to give us like, that real sense of progression. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, Oda does such a good job of like showing these bonds that are created. Like even in just this chapter alone, like between Luffy and Ace, Ace and Whitebeard, Whitebeard and his crew. Yeah, I think it's, it's coming together beautifully. All right, so uh, any other thoughts for this one? It's about to get insane. That's all I got. <laughs> No matter who emerges victorious in this epic battle, an era will end and a new one will begin. 
Mm-hmm. Whoever wins, we lose. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Maybe> not quite. <laughs> okay, let's move on to chapter 553, Paramount War. Aokiji responds to the tsunamis using Ice Age to freeze the waves in midair as well as the sea itself, which also gives the pirates a way to lead their ships and fight. The admirals and vice admirals mobilize as well, and chaos ensues. Mihawk decides to test Whitebeard, sending a massive shockwave, but it's stopped by Diamond Jozu. Kizu attempts to attack Whitebeard, but his attack is stopped by Marco as it becomes covered in blue flames. Kizu trying to speed run this fucking arc. <laughs> Let's get to the slow end. Slow down, slow down, dude. Okay. They call him lazy. <laughs> Just wants to get home and smoke. <laughs> yeah, but we uh, start out with, uh, you know, Aokiji. Also, you know, kind of trying having... to speed run this arc. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or at the very least, slow it to a crawl. <laughs> Yeah, so his his response is uh, it's it's pretty crazy because uh, we yeah. see like the moment where he like we see him like kind of just disappear from his chair. He's like so fast, and he like stops like the waves in midair and frees them. So like he has the power to like stop these massive waves that were about to like you know overwhelm everybody, and then he just freezes the ocean as well, which we did see him freeze like the um, like the sea um, back when he first showed up in the Long Ring Long Land. Um, but yeah, we, we, we can see it, um, also able to stop these big waves too, which is pretty crazy. So cool. The perfect answer. Mm-hmm. And then he even tries to, uh, send some ice projectiles at Whitebeard and just the force of one punch from, from Whitebeard in response <laughs> makes out with Kiji have to dissipate in the ice and basically. <laughs> I was just kidding, bro. I was just kidding. <laughs> We're good. We're good. No, it's all chill. Yeah, yeah, chill, chill out, man. <laughs> We get so many cool, so many cool double page spreads of these different groups advancing on each other. We have the the division leaders. We have the vice admirals, who I think are the same ones from the Buster Call on any lobby. Yeah, at least a few of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love that panel. A few familiar faces. They're a bunch of uh, samurais in uh, business casual. <laughs> <laughs> You have the Chaba manga back from uh, Amazon. Really. <laughs> yep. I saw this guy with a, I, I assume he has a spider devil fruit with these arms on his back. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was assuming it has to be a devil fruit, right? It's actually eight style, eight sword style. Eight sword style. <laughs> <laughs> hot to <toward> you. <laughs> He's trying to do Hachi over here. Sheesh. Uh, but Cody, to your point, I do feel like the paneling so far, and I think like from this chapter, uh, yeah, I feel like this this chapter in particular starts like this like unconventional paneling that I think kind of carries throughout, um, the, at least like the rest of this volume that we've been covering so far. Just like there's a lot of like slanted angles, and like mm-hmm. we see like, um, kind of like two third, like panels where they kind of go like halfway to the other page kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, I just thought like it kind of stood out how different and dynamic the paneling is for for this this volume. Yeah, I'm not sure if that stood out to anybody else. No, I think I think you make a really good point. It brings up the um, the the scope this has and also the fact that it's literally the world's axis is tilting like this is going to be <laughs> a huge, a huge game changer. <laughs> And so everything's just a bit off kilter. The fact that no one saw a conflict of this scale. Well, I mean, they, 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 no one, um, no one can imagine a conflict of this scale until it actually happens. <laughs> yeah, I think there's also just like so much happening that Oda has to try to like fit it all in. Mm-hmm. So I, I do feel like it also lends to how chaotic things are starting to feel because like the war is now breaking out. Uh, you know, they're entering, like they're jumping off the ships, and like now they're able to actually fight back. So, yeah, it's, it's, it starts just becoming like all out chaos here. Yeah, it's I mean, a lot it's of great. action panels. Mm-hmm. And in this case, a lot of like large scale action panels as well, because it's 
Mm. Like we said, it's a war. So there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of people to be portrayed. Yeah, for sure. I think that is one of my favorite things about the way Oda um, does this paneling is because like you said, Joel, there is so much going on that it's so dense, but he is taking the space to like on every single double page spread. There is at least one huge panel showcasing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so in one case, he's giving us these big reveals, but then everything else that she still has to squeeze in becomes so small that it is, oh my God, there is so much happening in all these little panels. <laughs> He's he's having his cake and eating it too with the way he looks. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so he does take the time to devote to these larger panels. I do think to show scale because we're seeing like how many people are you know entering the fray here, and then we also see like how big some of these attacks are. So I do feel like Oda is kind of maximizing the space uh, without trying to get too greedy with it. So like he could, you know, take a full double page spread for some of these things, but like. There's just so much like to cover that I, I feel like he kind of also doesn't have that luxury to to do that as well. So it's, it's kind of like um, like you said, having your cake and eating it too. He's kind of finding like a a way to balance that. Mm-hmm. I mean, with these battle scenes, like you know the 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 one with the vice admirals, for example, the cannons firing, they're getting cut, the admirals are advancing. That's all just so fast. Yeah. So these small panels, they are gonna like give the sense of this this war is just breakneck speed everything is coming down <laughs> and if i may um shit on the toei anime for a second um <laughs> like this like uh, i think impel down was the start of it i didn't really watch marine for as much but this is where they really really start to milk every second they can and just try and drag things out and i think this is like the one arc where you like you don't want to do that yeah because this is just a blitz. And I think, I think just, I, I the, and this is when I'm like, okay, like I say people should, if they start with the anime, you should start reading the manga at Skypiea. But I think this is where like, you know, like it's a totally, totally different experience reading the manga compared to the anime. There is something so beautiful about the way this is laid out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, again, not, not to talk about the anime too much, but I, I yeah, agree I where um, you, you do feel it when you're watching, like, the anime where it's like this should be more exciting than than it is because of how the anime was presenting it i do remember it like seeming to drag on and and take a long time for certain things to happen um but you know that that is just part of like the the problem with the format which is why we're getting a remake so soon before the series even ended so hopefully we'll get that early next year um and see how that is but yeah (laughs) But yeah, back to the the pages. Uh, we do see like this cool like shockwave attack from Mihawk, <gasps> and then uh, it's Simon like Whitebeard who like does anything. Like Whitebeard basically stands there, and Jozu steps in the way. So we see Jozu's power in action here, which is really cool. So we see him like ha- be like half diamond. Pretty and cool. the frost of him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is so crazy because, like, when Mihawk first came into the picture, it's like, oh, this is the ceiling for how strong someone can be in this world. Yeah. And then we should see somebody tank him. It like, it really lives up to all these chapters later, all those mythical qualities of, like, the Grand Line. Oh, it's a terrifying place. And we're like, well, how terrible. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know the guy we just saw who cut ships in half? Well, there's a guy down in the Grand Line who could just tank that hit. <laughs> and also, to, to add to that, these are pirates from the New World. So, mm-hmm. Toby was talking about how the New World is even more dangerous. So, yeah. uh, it's like the Grand Line of the Grand Line. So, we're seeing some of these pirates here who uh, are showing what that means. Um, yeah, because they even like state here. He blocked it. He stopped the world's most powerful sword slash. So Mihawk doesn't look too happy about it. But and yeah, it, it's another to <laughs> to to continue power scaling this <laughs> and to 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 oblivion. He blocked a hit from Mihawk without seemingly any effort at all, and he's not the fucking captain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How powerful is Whitebeard? Like at that point, like. <laughs> <laughs> he's the subordinate to Whitebeard? Like, okay. 
<laughs> what does that mean? I think we know what it means, but we just can't quite <laughs> comprehend it. Yeah, and to also keep that train going, we see also Marco, the elite of the first division, uh, who is fighting one of the admirals, who we've already seen to be one of the most powerful forces in this world. Uh, so yeah, we see him stepping up to face the admiral. Yeah, this is very, very, very cool. It's kind of like like we've been talking about this moment for so long, and the the two biggest forces that we know to be in this world, uh, Whitebeard and his pirates, along with his allies, and then um, the navy and the admirals and the warlords. Uh, you know, like there could not be higher stakes or a more a stronger show of force that we are aware of. And so it's very cool to see how like the first few chess pieces are moved in this confrontation and kind of how they're playing to favor favorable matchups, right? Like you, like you <laughs> said, Whitebeard hasn't moved an inch. Like he has been standing on top of his ship the entire time and he, his allies are stepping in to like match the onslaught of the the navy here. Yeah. Um which is pretty hype. I remember seeing characters we haven't even seen before. We get to see Marco, who... Uh, well, actually, we don't get to see too much of Marco yet. We'll get to, so we'll get to Marco next chapter. But We'll get more of um, it, yeah. Yeah, but it's just so, it's just so cool seeing... Yeah, but it's just so cool getting to see these matchups. And like you said, um, seeing attacks we thought unstoppable being stopped. And, uh, <laughs> you know characters we thought unbeatable like stopped immediately up after their first attack like it's it's pretty <laughs> wild and it's it, it's it's getting very exciting yeah yeah it's like very casual like when uh uh borsalino does the uh, yasakai sacred jewel it's like the beams start coming at um at whitebeard it's like hey now that's a bit too bright that's when marco steps in and he says uh you can't take our king this early in the game Mm-hmm. Yep. The chess match has officially <laughs> begun. It keeps reading, oh, the Whitebeard Pirates are so scary. <laughs> <laughs> Such a fucking ass. Who <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, scared? Shut up. <laughs> Why? I'm <are you> so <laughs> scared. <laughs> But I, I do think he's he's showing a little bit of respect. He's like, okay, he's in, it's his it's the closest you're gonna get at this point for Kizaru to actually be like, okay, like he's mm -hmm. being sarcastic, yeah. but he's not being a hundred percent sarcastic. Yeah, well, I think he's <laughs> I don't think he's being like so sincere. Like I think he he's like recognizing like you know he's like I, I see you like I respect like your abilities, but like yeah, I think he, he's not legitimately like, scared. He's like, oh no, I'm gonna die. I gotta run. <laughs> like, uh, like he's like, oh, okay, these guys, um, you know, they're they're a uh, legitimate force. So, I feel like he, like a lot of other people we've seen, even in this chapter, are kind of like seeing this as an opportunity to to test themselves or kind of test their opponents. You know, yeah. like I said, it, it feels like all the chess pieces are finally on the board and we're like playing the game. Yeah, uh, even like Mihawk <laughs> is kind of like. Uh, what does he say? He says something along the lines of like, I've like, what does he say? Hold on, I'll find I it. I want to test the distance between myself and that man. Exactly. Yeah. So even Mihawk is seeing this as, as an opportunity to kind of see the the gap in strength between him and the acting uh, pirate king. Well, to be clear, he's he's not he's not. He's not the pirate he's closest, kid. He's one of yeah, four. Yeah, so I meant by like acting, like yeah, 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 yeah. pseudo pseudo pirate he, king. He, right now, he's he's a top candidate for for he pirate is, king. He is currently yeah. in the lead, <laughs> but that lead seems to yes. be slipping a bit. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> right, the test is about to happen. Okay, you guys are good to move on. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Choppers, I'm not food, you jerks. Final volume, man versus bird. Chopper hides while the inhabitants that were chasing him fight off a giant bird. I know the big bird was in this. <laughs> <laughs>
the chopper's like, all right, I'll take a moment to rest. You guys can fight that thing off. I'll, uh, I'll hide over here. <laughs> and he's hiding properly. Uh, <laughs> he's finally figured it out. <laughs> he's got it. Okay. Moving on to chapter 554, Admiral Akainu. Marku shows his mythical Zoan ability as he takes on the form of a phoenix. Josie lifts a massive iceberg, throwing it at the giants and the navy forces. Admiral Akainu uses a great eruption to destroy the iceberg, which also causes chunks of lava to fall over the pirates and their ships. Little Oris Jr., the descendant of the continent polar, arrives to help Ace as the warlords prepare to enter the fray. Too hype, too hype, too hype. <laughs> yeah, so more devil fruit reveals. Mythical zones. Yeah, what? That's a new one. How cool. <laughs> Although we have seen a dinosaur zone before. I don't know if that was mythical or not, but. Was it ancient I mean, zone? Uh, ancient zone. No, it's gotcha. mythical. <laughs> it is mythical. Dinosaurs are a liberal hoax. <laughs> uh, they were placed there by the devil to trick us. Exactly. <laughs> it's the devil fruit. It's all there. It's all there. It's all connected. Yeah, I don't remember what they referred to um, uh, Drake's fruit. No, it was ancient. Yeah, I don't remember. Both ancient. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First mythical zone. And it's very cool. I love how this uh, looks on the page. This is a very sweet dragon fruit ability. Devil fruit? Or zone. Or, yeah. Devil fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even that kid was like, I've never seen a bird like that before. So it was like, sparkling as yeah, he flies through the air. <laughs> Doing his best Moltres impression. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a funny exchange between the two of them. Marco uh, says, Ah, it still hurts. He was like, Liar. <laughs> Marco gets kicked in. Mm, this really hurts. <laughs> Liar. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so they're kind of like toying with each other a little bit. And the Navy has like this whole like giant unit. And Josie just and says, yeah, let me haul an iceberg like 10 times each of your size. <laughs> yeah, I know how to deal with giants. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's like an insane iceberg. Yeah, it's wild. Because like, look at the scale compared to how big the giants are to how big the iceberg is. It's like bigger than all the giants combined. <laughs> yeah. Also a testament to Aokiji's ability. Like that's a significant amount of ice. Yeah. That's <laughs> like deep. So is it Akainu and not Akainu? That's what I always used to say. Uh, I think the, the general um, pronunciation would be Akainu. All right. As a yeah. kid, I always said Akainu. I think I in the that. anime, they've used both. Okay. In the dub, um, I think the first time they say Akainu, but um, I think later they say Aka Inu, just because I think yeah. it goes with um, well, because like Aka would be red, and Inu would be dog. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so okay. it's a Aka Inu. Yeah. Valid. Yeah. yeah, it's a cool reveal. Aka Inu's ability for the first time. Um, I know we mentioned this in the past through the SBS, but like seeing. Um, his face. You can tell he's based on a real person, just like <laughs> the other admirals. It's just hilarious. It's like very apparent, but what a cool ability. I love how um, his his limb kind of like melts into this like lava magma and then literally explodes out as this giant like molten fist. That's such yeah. a cool such a cool ability. And it kind of it kind of wraps up a theme where I feel like all the admirals have kind of like an elemental type ability with the the ice, like water ice and the magma um, and light. Kind of like they loosely all feel kind of like similar um, abilities or like elemental abilities. Like they're kind of like part of like a set type, type of thing. Yeah. You can see where also their admiral names come from because, you know, uh, the power, the powers are based on those colors. So you got right. red, blue, and yellow, which is what their names are. 
after. Because I, I think we mentioned that before. The naming convention for them. Right. Uh, going back to your earlier comment about uh, uh, um, Akainu being based on a real person. So his likeness is taken from Japanese actor Bunta Sugawara, uh, who made a name for himself uh, playing a lot of Yakuza characters. Uh, and he was also in the original Japanese cast of Spirited Away. Hmm. He played uh, Kamaji, the, uh, the spider guy at the bathhouse. Yes. I did see that. That's awesome. <laughs> and also uh, for, for Cody, um, a lot of these panels like are familiar from the, the card game. Dude, the a amount lot. of times to like, <laughs> oh, I say, you haven't seen that oh, great eruption. Okay, wow, crazy. <laughs> that great eruption had to get banned. <laughs> it was too good. <laughs> yeah, this kind of sacred jewel. This is anti-navy anti -Navy discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so then... Uh, I mean, it I does seem like a pretty powerful... Oh, my God. Yeah, I was, just, I was just kind of adding to that how we see his... Uh, like, the fallout basically being like the magma chunks mm -hmm. falling all over the ships and the pirates. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. It also makes Whitebeard move. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. Yeah, he had to put out his, his weapon. Stick to letting candles on birthday cakes, Magma Boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whitebeard brought all of his one liners to this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the middle of the page, we see the reactions to the people on Saba Odi watching on the screens. Like, it's like, it's like we're watching the end of the world. Because like they're they're seeing like all these like devil fruit abilities are, are like larger than life and like how crazy like the scale like all these like because we're we're like reading this on the pages and we're talking about like how crazy this stuff is. Imagine like watching it on like live TV, be like that's happening right now in this world. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Greetings. The uh the the United Nations is fighting the every pirate organization across the entire universe right now. We we tune in live to Wolf Blitzer. Shit's <laughs> fucked, y'all. They're actually feeling the earthquakes. Like they're actually <laughs> literally feeling the earthquakes. Yeah. Then at the end of the chapter, Little Oris Junior, the descendant of Oris from Throw Bark, uh, makes his appearance and then the warlords prepare to to step in and moria is thrilled yeah <laughs> i think i get another chance of the wars <laughs> this was in better condition too <laughs> kuma is noticeably silent yeah yep even has the the text bubble to tell you he's being silent <laughs> i'm specifically not saying anything <laughs> with this guy what is with him Okay, you guys get to move on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Limited cover series number 16, Nami's Weather Report, Volume 1. The business of the legendary sky island Weatheria. Nami witnesses the citizens of Weatheria make business deals with other islands to control the weather. Wow. Weather yeah. being profitable? <laughs> Nami, Nami's listening. Yeah. Taking notes. It's like, hey, we got to compensate that, that dance powder. Mm. Can't have that stuff around. Remember how <laughs> how bad that was? Yep. But apparently, like, yeah, maybe they have um, a more fair way of doing things, but I don't know. Because that, that's my impression. That seems to be like they're like making like deals with like nearby nations to control the weather. That's the impression I'm getting. That's the impression that I get. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but more on that later. For now, chapter 555, Oris and the Hat. Ace shouts for Oris to retreat as he is too big of a target. Oris insists on helping his friend as he lifts a navy ship and smashes it down, clearing a path for the other pirates. Whitebeard tells Oris not to get himself killed and orders the others to support him. Hancock joins the fight, taking out both pirates and navy officers, 
making it clear she isn't taking sides, though she considers her obligation to fight in the war against Whitebeard fulfilled. Kuma unleashes a massive Earth of Shock, knocking Little Oris Jr. to his knees as his hat falls to the ground. Ace had made the hat for Oris to protect him from the sun and the rain. Before Oris is taken out, he aims to take out at least one of the warlords, setting his sights on Doflamingo. This proves to be a mistake as Doflamingo severs one of Oris' legs off. As Oris stretches out his hand to reach for Ace, his body is pierced by Moria's shadows. Well, shit's fucked all, Mm y'all. Hey, what do you guys want to start on this one? Do these um these captain plus soldiers on this ship aren't even as big as his thumbnail? <laughs> yeah. Massive. He puts the Giga in Giga Chad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did he get here? What ship did he take? He needed to swim over. I think he just walked. He just waited. <laughs> he waded through the ocean to get there. <laughs> yeah, I love Orz's reaction to the hat. It's a lot cooler. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Oh. Uh, yeah, get a nice little flashback. Them from the Wano people. Hmm. Hmm. Do we know anybody else, Evan, that came from Wano? Uh. Was ringing any bells? Don't recall. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a hint. It was in Thriller Bark. From Wano? Wano. Yeah. Uh... Zombie. <laughs> Had swords. Yeah. I'm trying to remember his Three name. Japanese. Yeah. We watched the short yeah. about him. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about, but his name is. Yeah, yeah I know. Me. Is that uh, Ryuma? Ryuma, yes. Yeah, yeah. They, they call him the the samurai from Wano. Nice. So yeah, just a, just a little uh, connection back to uh, that kind of gave me a little bit more of um, a sense of yeah you know, this the style because you know this is where he learned like the the techniques to make the hat from like the Wano style. Very cool. Yeah, so I think this is a nice little touch, um, touching um, flashback. Mm-hmm. How uh, Ace made friends with Little Oris Jr. and just made made the hat for him, and like he seemed like so pleased with the hat. He's like, <laughs> yeah, so protected him from like the the sun and the rain. And it's just Took something like he, yeah, he just kind of like was just dealing with like all the time. Yeah, I thought this was some touching backstory, and like it really speaks to Ace's character. And yeah. with a straw hat being a symbol of friendship, I don't know if that's coincidence or not, but. Hmm. <laughs> nice, nice. A cool connection. I'll say it took Ace three tries to make it because he kept burning it up. <laughs> three tries with like, a, like three tries with a normal size hat is a lot. Yeah, three tries with a giant hat. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done. Just the, the finishing touches, and oh no! <laughs> oh. Uh. I don't even think Ors is like is Ors even in Ace's division. Like the fa- not to say that like he doesn't deserve like a nice fare, but like it just shows like just how well Ace got to know like everyone in this crew. Yeah, and how much love he had for everyone under Whitebeard's banner. Yeah, and then like you know, Little Ors Junior is just like so determined to like Ace is like kind of like no, hey, like back off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that little Ors. <laughs> He's like the biggest guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Doflamingo and Mori are savage. Is savage. This the, again, my memory is bad. Have we seen Doflamingo fight anyone besides like Bellamy until this point? Have we seen him like use powers or something? Or we saw him in a the first severed limb we've seen from him. Yeah, certainly that. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, Cody. What are you gonna say? I was gonna say I think like uh, in Jaya we saw him like doing something to mess with a marine and make him attack another marine but like oh uh, yeah 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 mm-hmm. that's pretty right. much all we've seen from him yeah so not exactly clear what he's doing but he's doing something i'm sure it's not a problem yeah no, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. yeah 
but yeah, it is it is rough to see. Like after we just had like that touching moment with like Orr, so you like see like his history with Ace and how he just wants to help his friend, and you see his Lego flying, yeah. and then Dopamine is just like laughing about it very cruelly. <sighs> I'm sure it'll go uphill from here. We just got to keep going. Yeah, everything's gonna be fine. You cleared a path. It's gonna be easy. He gets so close like to Ace. We've... We've seen a lot of sacrifice to get to this moment, and it just kind of feels like ours won't be the last, you know, casualty of this war. It's just crazy to see these characters that we're close to, or characters we're close to, or close to, um, already starting to fall uh, as the war begins. Yeah, it's pretty tough to see. It's tough to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we still see like ours pushing through, even though he's like. Yeah, he, he's he's not looking so good. He's like, I'm like so close, just a little further. And we see, I think Mori's powers look really cool in these two panels here. I would see like the yeah, like the bats. Um, but he, like he's mad at Doflamingo for like he's like, hey, I'm I was going to take that that corpse when I was done with him. Like you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we see the shadow piercing right through his body. Right when he was like, he was like. Just a few feet away from Ace, and we see him start to fall. Yeah, it's crazy that Moria and Doflamingo are kind of toying with this massive giant, who's like proven to be this incredibly powerful weapon that could like turn the tide of the war. And all of a sudden, they, and it seemingly in like two pages, just uh, make quick work of of Ors here. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you compare it to like how the Straw Hats. Or taking on ores and throw a bark, it like, right. took like the whole like all the straw hats after like you know the fighting like all night, <laughs> yeah, to to take out ores, and we see kind of like how easily like somebody like ores got defeated by these warlords. Yeah, Doflamingo is literally like laughing like, "Ha, this is so fun." Yeah, like like a real psycho. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But he seems to be like enjoying like the chaos in general, like yeah, yeah. So I think this is kind of like he's in his element here. All right, are you guys good to move on? Ready. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving on to Nami's weather report, final volume: the weather science of Weatheria. Nami is impressed to see the technology to control the weather in action. Yay, rain! What's the deal <laughs> with that orb? That's my question. We see it in the we see it in the last cover story as mm. well. Mm. Is that like the bottom of their little world, or is that the bottom of Weatheria? the Sky Island, that orb? Um, I think no. it's just like um a device that they use to to make the weather. Gotcha. Because it looks like it, it's just like it looks like it's creating like a rain cloud, like just in that one little section. Mm-hmm. Yes, we have like a bunch of those for different clouds and conditions. Where I'm not sure if it's like the same one. They just like change like the settings to make it like do different weather. But yeah, I don't know. Okay, but let's move on to chapter 556. Justice will prevail. Forest falls as Moria and Doflamingo laugh. Whitebeard pirate Atmos confronts them. Vice Admiral Lons attempts to attack Whitebeard, but the giant is easily disposed of. Whitebeard shouts for the others to press the advantage or is provided with his life as a bridge to get to Ace. Doflamingo uses his powers to control Atmos and attack his allies. Kobe and Tamepo hide as they are in over their heads. While hiding, they witness Aki Inu confront another Navy soldier who no longer wishes to fight. Aki Inu shows no mercy, killing the Navy soldier for not having the courage to fight. He then receives a report that preparations for his plan are in place. Additional Whitebeard reinforcements arrive as Whitey Bay's ship crashes through the icebergs. Garp arrives and sits next to Ace. Sengoku tells Garp not to try anything, but the Vice Admiral assures him that he just wants to sit with his family, wondering why Ace couldn't have just joined the Navy like he wanted him to. Out of nowhere, a ship is seen falling out of the sky. Along with it are Luffy and the other prisoners who escaped from Impel Down.
<laughs> it's a bird. It's a plane. <laughs> it's a pirate ship. <laughs> I mean, how else would Luffy uh, make an entrance? Yeah, right. <laughs> This is like the Celestial Dragon entrance. <laughs> Through the roof. <laughs> yeah, because we saw like Whitebeard make this cool entrance. I was like, oh, that's epic. And we see Luffy like falling from the sky. Like, how would you get in this situation? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you keep going too far. It's because that but it's because that guy blinked. <laughs> Don't blame this on me, Croc Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love the yeah, crocodile is just while falling is just completely serene. Like he can just disperse into sand once he hits the guy. He doesn't give a shit. Like Well, if he hits the water, that would be a problem. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think cause yeah. what do you think screws off if crocodile falls into the ocean? What like kills him first? Is devil fruit preventing him from drowning or the water turning him into like what is he screwed no matter what? Like <laughs> Like making him drown, or or it's just his powers going haywire. So I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's uh, I, I, I think the sea would just uh, essentially make him weaker. So if he yeah. just landed in the water, like in his regular body, then he would just n not be able to, like, really move too well. Yeah. Um. But if he was like in sand form, I don't know how that affects his body. That yeah, that's an interesting uh mm -hmm. question. But I, I don't know. <laughs> you may never know. But even if he's in his real body, he can't swim. Yeah. He can't swim. Yeah. He'd have real lungs instead of sand lungs, and they just... Yeah. Uh, Gene Bay's also looking pretty calm. Yeah. <laughs> well, just another Tuesday for a warlord of the sea. <laughs> it's like, what what cool dive should I do when I hit the water? <laughs> Very Zorro of him. Yeah. Yeah. Then meanwhile, you have different reactions with uh, Ivanka, Buggy, and Luffy screaming their heads off. Uh, Mr. Three as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I just saw Mr. One. He's also like unfazed. <laughs> he's got like, his arms crossed. Excellent. I think back to the earlier parts of this chapter, we get mm. such a sick white beard panel. Yeah. Where he just blows Vice Admiral Lons's helmet and a good part of his head up with his uh quick quick powers. <laughs> so cool. And seeming like this new kind of ability that we haven't quite seen. Yeah, so he kind of creates like it looks like an aura. Like... Yeah. It's like he's kind of affecting like the space around his hand to to trigger the ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just like smashes this guy's like helmet. Very powerful. And he was a giant. He just like yeah, one hand just took out this giant. <laughs> and just the brute strength to just pin him to the ground by his neck. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty wild. And then like we were talking about before, we see Doflamingo uh, manipulating uh, Atmos. Mm-hmm. Um, and he starts attacking his allies. So just like we saw him do uh, back at Marajoa. And you get a, a great speech from Doflamingo, too. I have a, a theory on Doflamingo's ability. I don't know oh, if yeah? I mentioned it already, but I, I feel like um, seemingly part of his character design is his um, using like his fingers, and his fingers are always like in weird kind of like contorted shapes um and is that plus his ability to kind of like manipulate people to his own will it feels very like marionette like he's got like them uh controlling like with like some sort of like string or with using his hands or his fingers to kind of like orchestrate or like marionette control people hmm. Hmm. interesting yeah i, I can see that Thematically, it fits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it, Cody, you're saying that he um, had an interesting speech. Yeah, just uh, talking about uh, the different points of view of the world and the circumstances people have. Um, 
which uh, frames this entire conflict so nicely and I think speaks to some of the greater themes we've been seeing in One Piece over these past couple arcs, especially with the introduction of the Celestial Dragons and uh, yeah. emphasis on the greater world at large. Yeah, so he says, are the pirates the bad guys? Is the Navy the good guys? Things like that change with the seasons. And he says, um, justice will prevail. Of course it will, because the side of justice will be whichever side wins. Uh, based. <laughs> not so based. We... <laughs> well, <laughs> not, not the fact that it happens, but based like, yeah, based, based, you know, he's <laughs> he's being honest about it at least. Yeah. <laughs> Truthful. But, but we, we do see his kind of outlook on things. So his his kind of philosophy is, um, like the victors are the ones who will tell the history. So that they're the ones that get to write the history, and they're the ones who, like the people with power, are the ones who decide what is right and wrong. So it's kind of like he's he's not really like necessarily rooting for one side or the other. He's just kind of like enjoying like the uncertainty. But like his whole thing is like. The, the power is what makes somebody right. Very interesting. This is not even the first time we've kind of heard that theory portrayed, and not even by Doflamingo. I feel like even Doflamingo kind of alluded to this earlier on. Hmm. And speaking of uh, power, what do you guys think of this interaction with Aki Inu and this Navy soldier who is trying to uh, escape from fighting in the war? Give him the emperor's peace. I don't know what to say. Like, no, oh, anybody. Forty yeah. k. Anybody? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely find myself with that one. <laughs> being down for conscientious objection around high school, and uh, I don't think this was active in my mind when I saw that, but it definitely. Uh, I'm sure there was some influence on it. <laughs> yeah. So Kobe and Hamepo are kind of in the same situation as this navy soldier, where they're like, "We don't want to fight." And they're like kind of hiding, and they witness Akino confront the soldier. And he's saying, like, he's begging to like let him go. I, got, I have a family. Like, please let me take care of them. So then he says, if you care about your family, then die an honorable death and just kills them. Yeah. So again, he's an admiral in the Navy, one of the highest positions you can have in the Navy. And this is the way that they handle these situations. But then, do you also remember in the O'Hara flashback how he also handled mm -hmm. that situation too? Mm -hmm. so, so I know it was a little while, but in case you guys uh, don't remember, um, so he was the one who decided to fire on the the ship that was escaping with um, the civilians, just in case any of like the scholars were on the ship. So he's the one that ordered to have be shot down. Just in case somebody got away. Absolute justice. Written by the winners. Like, I already really don't like him, but I am very curious to see uh, his backstory and how he got to be such an extremist. And uh, again, I know we, we bring up the card game a lot, but this leader was also <laughs> banned. <laughs> yep. yep. And so, that was, that was a good one to see get banned. So <laughs> very impressive. Yep. <laughs> and we uh get Whitey Bay with like the icebreaker ship. So it looks like it's designed to crash through. Uh it's, it looks like it's like reinforced like steel plates. She metagamed them. <laughs> We also get a, a Vice Admiral Suru's power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Laundry fruit. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, I forgot she had a devil fruit. <laughs> She's like very subtle. Like we just see here, like um on this one panel where she like turns people into like laundry and put <laughs> and is hanging up on the laundry um clothesline. You all washed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those powers that it's like it's kind of like a joke but then you're like that seems obscenely strong <laughs> like just like <laughs> and you're flat now like <laughs> I 
I'm all washed up. <laughs> I just yeah. love the guy. Got hung out to dry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nice wordplay there. Yeah, and then uh, we have this little um, moment, too, where uh, Garp just sits next day. So he's not fighting in the war. He's not, like, actively participating. So he's just sitting here with Ace, and he's kind of, like... Like, he's sad, like, that this is happening to Ace. Because he wanted, like, the best for him. But, like, he's kind of in a situation where he's like, I have this commitment to the Navy... Like you went against the like the will of the navy and like the law, like yeah, you know, I thought I told you better than that. Like, why did you have to pursue this path in your life? And he's like, now, like I, I can't, I, I can't help you here, but like he's still like kind of um, like grieving that like he has to be in the situation. Good Tough spot. spot. It's rough. It's very conflicted. It just sucks because like thinking back to like. Ace's affinity for Whitebeard for not caring about his lineage. Garp literally took his greatest enemy's son in. Yeah. Now, granted, like, you know, there was a very active difference in opinion and uh, direction in life, which is going to make any parental relationship a little strained. But still, it's just. <laughs> ah, it's so sad. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like there's a moment where Sengoku is going to, like, order him to, like, like right, then help out. And Garp just tells him, shut up. Just let me sit here. <laughs> I ain't doing shit, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um, Sengoku tells him, outlaws deserve no mercy. And then Garp says, oh, wait, no. Um, or is that? Oh, wait, no, that, that's Garp saying that. So Garp yeah. says, outlaws deserve no, no mercy. But this is family. What am I supposed to do? So he, he's definitely conflicted. Mm-hmm. And then before we get to the like the Luffy fall out of the sky. Um, we also have this little panel where uh, Hemepo is talking to Kobe. And Kobe tells him, did you hear about the plan? They're going to execute Ace ahead of schedule. Thanks. Uh-oh. Good thing the impel down homies just got here. <laughs> yeah. Right on time. Tides have turned. Okay, you guys good to, to move on to the last chapter of the episode? Okay, moving on to limited cover series number 17, Brooks, Repayment for a Night Stay in Underwear, Volume 1, People Who Do Not Fight. Brooks sees one of the cultists is kidnapped by the Long Arm Tribe. Your special punctuation back. (laughs) Yeah, we love it. Brooks like, I have no idea what's going on. (laughs) Okay. But let's wrap up this episode with chapter 557, Luffy and Whitebeard. Luffy's ship was knocked up by one of the sea quakes and then frozen by Aokiji, leaving them stuck in the air. While trapped, they heard a transmission come through, revealing that they are moving Ace's execution ahead of schedule. They managed to knock the ship loose, causing it to fall and luckily land into the water below as opposed to the surrounding ice. Luffy is excited to see Ace and his group is ready to save him. Everyone is shocked to see the Straw Hat Luffy is here. Jinbei formally declares his resignation as one of the seven warlords. Crocodile wastes no time as he attempts to kill Whitebeard. Luffy intervenes, telling Crocodile that he can't kill Whitebeard because Ace really likes him. (laughs) Whitebeard recognizes Luffy's hat as Shanks's. Whitebeard warns for Luffy not to get in over his head, but Luffy shouts at him not to underestimate him as he will be the king of the pirates. The others are surprised at Luffy's boldness for bickering with the legendary pirate. <laughs> so, um, this this chapter has what is perhaps my favorite line and interaction in the entirety of One Piece. It sums up the concept and story of One Piece in the span of two pieces of dialogue, which is, Garp, it's your family again! (laughs) (laughs) Which, the English dub delivery of this by a late voice actor whose name I've forgotten who played Sengoku is so 
fucking good. God, your family keeps messing things up again. <laughs> Is uh, Ed, Ed, Ed Baylock. Ed, Ed Laylock, uh, Rip yeah. the King. Um, yeah, he was and, such a good Sengoku, too. He's a fantastic Sengoku, and Lu- and Garf's reaction, Luffy, no! <laughs> I'm going to post a clip, because I watch it, like, at least once a week. Like, <laughs> it's so good. It sums up the entire, everything you need to know about this story in two, two pieces of dialogue. <laughs> Garp, it's your family again. Garp, your family's messing things up again. Garp screams, the end. Here you go. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Oh uh, man, priceless. I mean, it's all it's all coming together now. Mm-hmm. All the characters are here. Everybody is it's here we go. And of course my boy Crocodile <laughs> also immediately trying to speed run this arc, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Luffy and Ace finally face to face. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh one thing to note too is Luffy has been absent from this entire arc pretty much. Um well from like the, the main conflict. So now he's actively here part of the main conflict. Yeah. So yeah, this is all kind of building towards this. So yeah, now it feels like Luffy's here. It's like, okay, now like where is this going? Because uh, <laughs> we've been just like kind of yeah, like a showcase of like all these other powers. So it's been kind of nice to be able to take that time to really show us like the other players in the game, people we haven't seen before, other powers we haven't seen before. Um, so yeah, it's been like really nice to have that time to set the, that up. But now our main character is back into the fold, and we're gonna see how Luffy affects the story. And Buggy, don't forget Buggy. Okay, and buggy, buddy. of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love this Apple double page game. we get. <laughs> hey, I suddenly feel like I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Evan, you talk about the um, like the, the double page spread. Yeah, it's such an epic uh, illustration here. Yeah, mm-hmm. that one's pretty sick. The band photo. Yeah, in contrast yeah, to. What I was saying before is uh, where Oda wasn't taking a lot of time to dedicate two full pages to to like any panel, but now right. here he's like, all right, let's take this big panel. It's gonna get two pages worth of content, and it's a good one. I'm not mm, mad yeah. about it. Yeah, and uh, it's Borsalino. also cool in this. <laughs> oh no, go ahead. Let's just say, uh, and, and Borsalino says, "I didn't expect to see you again so soon." <laughs> Because he just saw him on Sabaody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is cool getting to see everyone's reaction, all these on both sides of the line, getting to see everyone's <laughs> kind of reaction of him showing up. <laughs> Do Flamingo, oh. the legendary upstart, Straw Hat. <laughs> <laughs> we even get to see uh, Django in full body. Or oh, was that already mentioned? Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah, know. no, it wasn't. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for yeah. a second. What's he doing here? That's not his usual crew. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, how Meppo's face coming out, like, because uh, he left his, his goggles <laughs> and he has like his eyes bulging. <laughs> oh, he's just fanboying. I always knew he was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Smoker not even paying attention to the, to the fire he's fighting. Look at me when I'm fighting you. <laughs> Dude, you can't hurt me. Like, <laughs> like somebody more important just showed up. <laughs> Considerably so. Yeah, I, I do love that panel where Luffy kicks Croc's hook away. So good. Once again, Whitebeard just not moving. Be like, nothing can can hurt me. <laughs> like, how awkward would it have been if, like, at like the first attack that came in, he didn't move, he just got hit and died. Like, <laughs> oh, uh, guess we. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was easy. <laughs> oh damn! Overestimated him a little bit. Yeah, I love this moment. Uh, Luffy jumping in, defending Whitebeard, and then immediately after that, like threatening him. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> And look how tiny Luffy is compared to Whitebeard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
gets props from Marco, name drops Shanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I I do love the, the little like back and forth here. It's like White Beard's like, you, you do know what you're up against, right? You're going to be killed for sure. It was like, shut up. That's not for you to say, I'm going to be the king of the pirates. And the uh, White Beard like, looks at me and says, like, cheeky devil. <laughs> <laughs> you better stay out of the way, you little snot. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like, I do what I want. <laughs> yeah, can't argue with that. What are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, so that's where we uh we leave we leave the volume for uh this episode. Whew. Insane. Yeah. This is just the first six chapters of the arc. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. Luffy you've been showing up faster be late now the party's really started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so you guys have yeah. any closing thoughts for the um the chapter or the volume as a whole? I love it. I love it so much. It's mm-hmm. so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I just it's just nonstop banger after banger. Like this is Marineford, man. Like this is <sighs> <laughs> Like the fact that the exposition part of this arc was this insane just speaks yeah. volume. Yeah. Yeah, this volume has been super fun to read. Normally I read like just the vo- just the chapters that we have allotted for the podcast, but like I could not put this volume down. <laughs> I, I think I read I read the whole thing in like one sitting. Like I was just like I couldn't uh couldn't stop once I started yeah. reading it. Oh, yeah. Um but yeah, it's so fun and it's such such a hype moment, such an anticipated moment. Um, I feel like there's been so much build up to this moment and it has lived up to the hype and is every bit as good as I thought it would be. So I've just been really enjoying this arc, this volume, and I'm looking forward to where it goes. Yeah, so we'll we'll have to see. But yeah, definitely a strong start to this arc. And I, I do think it's just been fun to kind of, again, deviate from things that we've like already seen in the series. Like this is like on a different level than what we've been exposed to because we're seeing like these big players in the world of one piece, like as a whole, like we're seeing like attacks and like abilities that like are unlike anything we've seen in the series so far. Um, like all of like the forces gathered here, like you can tell, like this is like a monumental event happening and unfolding. So it's just really cool to witness this um, you know, as a reader. Um, but, you know, like like I, I said with Impel Down, um, whereas like we, we've been focusing on characters that are not our usual main cast. So I do think it's interesting to be able to focus on other characters. Because like I was even saying before, is like Luffy's not really been present for a lot of what's been happening. Uh, Luffy is now involved here, but we're going to see how that affects the story. But like this whole section has been like so crazy with like characters that we're not even that familiar with. But it just feels like very exciting to get to know more of these characters and see them like in action, what they do. And there's more to come. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like the stakes could not be higher. It's like everyone we know of power (laughs) is here. Like it's like everyone's been saying, like the world is going to change after this transpires like it will be the dawn of a new era at the end of this this arc which is exciting okay but that would be a discussion for a future episode but for now that will conclude this week's episode of the we are reading one piece podcast you can find this episode wherever podcasts are found at we are reading one piece podcast.buzzfrout.com or our youtube channel at we are reading one piece this is a spoil-free channel up to you where we record the podcast. So if you're new to the series, you can visit the channel there. You can also find me and this podcast on my YouTube channel at Pirate King Codex for more One Piece content. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can reach us at wearereadingonepiece at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from listeners, so if you're enjoying the show, if you have any suggestions on how we can make it better, let us know. Next episode, we'll be finishing Volume 57, Paramount War. I've been Joel, and I've been joined by Sean. This has been Sean. Evan, thanks for listening. And Cody, war. This is war. (laughs) All right. Well, be sure to bring on all your hopes and dreams, and we'll see you on the next episode.
This podcast is messing things up again. 